Yo, welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet Violet VGC video. I'm your host, Jose Rocks, and today we have another episode of Journey Through VGC. The current format we're in is Regulation E. Y'all ready? Let's get into it. All right, we are back with a second video with our Mianchao team. Uh, this team, this video is going to feature a little bit more Clefairy than the last one did. The last one pretty much featured a lot of Mianchao. If you want to see more Mianchao featured with this team, um, I did post a video before this one. So just go ahead and click on that on the video that comes out directly before this one. But um, I want to have, you know, a couple more games with this team to show you how good this team is. This team is very fun, uh, very fast paced and does, you know, end games pretty quickly. Or sometimes, you know, has a lot of good counterplay into some of the meta mods. But um, that's going to be it. Let's go ahead and get into these battles. First match we have Ogre Pond, Dragonite, Chimpal, Sodomane, Urshifu, Rillaboom. I think Arcanine with Clefairy looks good here. Also the Dango. Definitely Arcanine here with Clefairy. I think a Rillaboom Urshifu lead could be scary. So if I leave Flutter, like I can just sweep through with Gleam and clean up. But Dingo looks good here too in Arcanine. Alright, let's go with this. I think going for the helping hand. All right, so we should be faster than this. So this should be able to pick up a KO. Helping hand, choice spec, shadow ball. Nice. Oh, we got a crit. That might have mattered. That might have mattered. Sorry about that. I had a phone call. I just wanted to answer it. Let them know I was recording. Um, the crit might have mattered, but I think that with the choice specs and us being max special attack, we will be able to get that KO. But we did just make him burn his terror immediately. So I kind of want to start clicking Gleam now. So I kind of want to switch out into Godango and follow me. I like a Nightshade to break Chimp House. Uh... Yeah. 
Nice shade to break Chen Pao Sash. Switch out here. Alright. That's also beautiful because he misses that. We may we may faint here if we I mean if we do it's fine. But it looks like we're gonna take it. And his Urshifu is not Scarf, which is really good. So that means we're going to outspeed it. So I can go for a follow me here. And Kefleri allowed us to survive. So it kind of reduced um, the damage that Urshifu is going to do with the friend guard. And counteracts the, uh, the sort of run. And at this point, I just remove Urshifu and, and yeah, I remove Urshifu and yeah, we, we know you're gonna protect there because Arcanine can beat the Chimpao. And we still have Terra too. It's close. Is that Sash? Oh, it is Sash. Okay. Fairy can take this. We are fortunate that he missed the icicle crash because that would make this attack KO. And then my opponent would have access to like priority into my Godango, but fortunately, that was not the case. I think Urshifu may protect this turn, so I'm going to Thunderbolt here. And now I have E speed pressure. Yeah. So I can kind of tell my opponent's play style is very uh, protective. Like, from the turn one, protect on Chimpa. He wants to protect his pieces, right? So we're just reading those protects and just going for the other slots. And he's life orb on Chimpa. Okay. Now we threaten with E speed. And I want to always E speed Urshifu because it just detected. And it's the one that can remove Arcanine for a fact with one hit, right? And if he's going for Sucker Punch onto Chimp onto my Godango, that means that he's not going for Sword, Sword, um, Sacred Sword onto Arcanine. Oh, so he switches that slot. That's fine with me. I mean, Urshifu just faints here. All right, little boom. And he goes for a double detect. Okay, that's a good play. I mean, if you get that, then you have access to going for uh, like an Aqua Jet. stuck with e-speed though I'd much rather be clicking flare blitz but I should I I shouldn't risk the switch because a wood hammer is likely into that slot and he protects uh chin pal Still want to thunderbolt this slot though. <clears throat> Is it just sucker punch? Oh, he didn't. Okay, he didn't go for sucker punch. 
So now I can just switch Arcanine out into uh, Fluttermane. And save my Fairy Terror, and then just click Fair Blitz. Yep, and that should be game. Really, boy can't beat all three. He's gonna try though. And if you would hammer here, you take so much recoil. Yeah, I just click Moonblast here, switch out into Arcanine. And he just cancels nice. Nice, and we played that game pretty well. I think Kaferi was amazing just being able to threaten um, redirection on one slot and also being able to have the friend guard up so that we can survive uh, certain hits that would KO us with Chimp out in the field. Uh, we did get the fortunate icicle crash mesh, but I think that just it would have just accelerated the game. But I still think I would have been in a good position since I had Arcanine in the back. But let's get to the next one. All right, so here we have Dragonite Chimpao. Villaboom, Ogre Pond, Scizor, and Urshifu. Very offensive, very physical team. I can't clean through with Godango because he has three resists to make it rain. And he has two resists to Fluttermane's Dazzling Gleam. I know I need Arcanine for this match. I think I want to go with the Kaflari Flutter lead again. And I go dango. We'll go with the same thing we did last game. And I think my opponent can play like a similar core here. Your food sizzler. Those are strong here. I think I'm just gonna click and you know, chip everything down. Is that Ogre Pond? So it's Chimp Pond. Are you going for a straight bullet punch here? It is. Oh, we do survive, which is beautiful. Life Orb, okay.
Chimpa always protects here. I think I want a nice shade scissor. I switch in a Godango. I don't think you ever uh, not protect Chimpa here. Get that call right. Hopefully, bullet punch the Flutterman slot. Yeah. I don't want to get Clefairy up just yet. Just a single redirection is still good for me. And I think I want to tear it here and make it rain. Get a double KO. Okay, he's switching. Yeah, it is Urshifu. But at least we hit it with a full uh, strength make it rain. So we threaten with E speed now. Depending on how much this does. The flurry gives me a free switch out to be able to reset my um my make it rain damage. All right, perfect. We take that fairly well, and we weather the scissor storm. That's good damage on Urshifu. I believe another Make It Rain plus uh, E Speed would KO Urshifu before it can move. As long as it's not Choice Scarf, right? <clears throat> he should bring out his last. You bring out Chimpa, you just give our E Speed more damage. switch in here. You could close combat go dangle and fake it out. But I should survive with Kaflary if I go for a switch in here. Or maybe he might KO me with the fake out, I'm not sure. <clears throat> I think it's the best play though. Very aqua jet. Is that how horsepower here? Alright, so E speed threatens clearing things. I just need to deal damage with Flutter, right? I think a Moonblast Specs should KO Rilla. And we should be able to. Urshifu's at minus two, so. We just keep clicking E speed so it can never get off a water attack and then Moonblast this slot. That should be enough to KO it. What terror is it here? It is really grass. Okay. Alright, 
so we didn't let him get the double up. He is at minus one, but it is Grass Terror. Is it a Glide? It is. Is this enough to KO Flutter? Oh, he went after Arcanine. I think you should always go after the Flutter there. And it's crazy because I told you, uh, well, my opponent, he didn't bring the same exact four. Uh, he, this one brought Scizor. And my previous opponent brought Ogre Pond on lead. But the other three were the exact same. And they kind of played in a similar manner. This one was a bit more scary because Futterman was starting with the Bullet Punch. As well as Kefleri. Yeah, but now we just click E speed and we always win. I don't think you're ever knocking out Arcanine there. Um, especially, I'm not even, uh, well, this is a bulkier Arcanine. Yeah. But I don't, I don't think you're ever knocking out Arcanine with the Glide at minus one. I think you should have tried to go for, because I don't have much bulk on my Flutter, so you may have been able to get the KO. I'm not sure if it, at minus one it gets it. But if you got that KO, and now you're threatening um, high horsepower and a Sacred Sword into Arcanine next turn. But if he doesn't get that KO, then whichever target he targeted didn't end up mattering. Because all we need to do is click E-Speed or Moonblast into Chen Pao once, and it was going to faint. But, but that was a, a another fun battle. Let's get into the next one. So for this match, we have a Dondozo. Um, glad it's not Tatsugiri, because I don't think we have the best matchup into that. But there is a Salamence, Rillaboom, Heatran, Flutter, and Urshifu. It's a pretty bulky team. If I terror my Urshifu into Steel, then I become weak to Heatran. And Heatran is likely to come here. Can't click close combat into Flutter and the Silent Mask, but you can't bring all six his mods. I want to force he trying to terror. I kind of want to leave Nian Chao or Shifu. Then go in the back and I think Flutter's okay here. These are two perfect close combat uh, selections. I want to fake out this time. Noah has Yawn and then Sword Stance. Yeah, Heatran is going to always tear it here. But I wonder if it has Terra Blast, because that can be kind of scary. I might should have Terra my Urshifu. Oh, it is Grass. Okay, that's not good. You got Terra Blast. Stone. So you probably would have maybe Heat Wave and Earth Power, so he may not even be carrying. Alright, I 
need to deal as much damage as possible here. Very terror. If I if I go for this moon blast though, I'm not dealing much damage to Dondozo. I do have Thunderbolt. Yeah, I kinda wanna remove Heatran. I know I'm at risk of getting heavy slammed here. But Dun uh my Goldingo does have Thunderbolt to hit Dondozo. And if he just goes for Yawn here, then I'll take that. I just don't think that Gleam will be able to do it. Oh, Gleam might have done it. Actually. Oh, okay, he has a citrus. Yeah, uh, I think I needed to do that because the citrus would have healed him up enough to survive. So that was the correct play. It all depends on what Dundozo goes for. Is it Yawn or Heavy Slam? Oh, it's just Yawn. Okay. I will take that over just removing, losing my Flutter Man. And I can allow Urshifu to fall asleep to get another powerful Surgeon Strikes off, to be honest. You can't protect it from the Urshifu, so the Yawn play don't really work on Urshifu because I can switch it out. I can consider switching out Flutter into uh, the Dango to stop the Yawn stuff. Oh, it's Dark Urshifu. I just went for Sucker Punch. Nice. Crit might have mattered, but knocking out down those with one hit is always beautiful. I'll take the fortunate crit. Oh, I, I thought it like, I don't know what I just thought. It's, like, it's almost like it was missed for a second. I'm pretty sure his Urshifu might have been faster than mine, so he could have gotten off a Wicked Blow instead of the Sucker Punch. My Urshifu does fall asleep now, but I can wake up after one turn of sleep, and we haven't taken any damage. We're still plus two, and I got Godango in the back. And I can lock into the best move that I choose. I, I feel is um, good for this last Mon that he sends out. Is it Rilla? Oh, it's his own Flutter. Okay, that's actually pretty scary. But I have choice... Choice Scarf go Dingo in the back, so we don't need to switch do any switches here. And we can just search your strikes. And the timid max speed, max special attack, Flutter Man continues to outspeed other flutters, which is beautiful. Yep. And now I could potentially wake up Urge for the next turn. So for, from his end, he should play for the fact that. Uh, he outspeeds my Godango and I can't Terror. He one-shots me with Shadow Ball, right? Uh, if he's not Specs. And then he thinks that I, uh, he hopes that I stay asleep one more turn with Urshifu. Or two more turns, so I can't get off Aqua Jet. So that's his line of play, but that always fails because we're Choice Guard, right? So we just outspeed him. But if he's not Choice Specs, he's going to forfeit here. If he can switch to Shadow Ball, he's going to go for Shadow Ball and Godango. So he won't forfeit. So if he forfeits here, that tells us that he was choice specs. And then we just go for Aqua Jet. Yeah, see, he's not choice specs. But we did end up waking up already, so. Nice. 
So he didn't even get to, to see if we were uh, choice specs or not. I mean, choice scarf or not over Bingo. But you only stay in there if you're able to switch to Shadow Ball and then you go for the play, like I said, with Urshifu staying asleep two more turns. You knock out Godango with the Shadow Ball and then you knock out Urshifu with a, with a Moonblast next turn after I stay asleep for the final turn. But we pretty much had that game checkmate. Uh, the crit was very fortunate on uh, Dondozo. I'm not sure if he was going for a Heavy Slam or another Yawn. Um... And also being next to the Urshifu is really strong, in my opinion. I feel like I played this my, my opponent's team before, and he kind of uh, locked me in with the Magma Storm and Yawns, and then Urshifu came in the back and was able to pin. I believe it was Choice Scarf Urshifu, too. So I, I believe I played that player before. He did get the best of me, like, um, early on in, like, Regulation E. Because um, I, I remember the name, the candy name, and the specific team. So if you are watching this video, you know, GG's, hope we can, you know, battle again and get uh, that best of three. But let's get into the next one. All right, we have a high-ranked opponent, and he's using Roy Moon, Arcanine, and Chiyu. Annihilate, Grim with Screens, and Amogus. So this does look a perfect game for Urshifu to set up. I think leading it with Nianchai to get um, the fake out pressure going is good. We ignore Amogus, which is perfect. I think Kaflary to redirect is also really good for us. And I don't want to bring Arcanine um, due to his matchup into Annihilate. I think Choice Specs Flutter Man can do a lot of damage. So we'll bring that. We're leaving Godango. Uh, he has two fire types. Um, they both resist, make it rain. That's not ideal. Annihilate most likely is fire terror or water terror. So that's going to resist, make it rain too. So I think I chose the best four. I think Urshifu can sweep this game. So I want to source things here. Fake out Grim. Chiyu is your terror here if it has terror. Oh, that's a good switch. That's a wonderful play tonight to take Chiyu. He's with a straight terror blast. Terror Blast that is. Alright, so I'm actually gonna Terror, go for Surgeon Strikes into Chiyu and Wide Guard. Just so he can't click Heat Wave. I think he meant the Terror turn one. It is Grass. Yeah, he could have just knocked me out. I had a feeling it was grass, that's why I went ahead and went for the terror. But well, holy crap, like, what did you do about this quick close combat in the TV turn one? I think if we knock out Chiyu here, we might just win. It's gonna be close, but I kill Aqua Jet next turn. I didn't even go for Rage Powder on Among Us. I think we can KO it next turn walk with it. Oh, that's nice, close. 
is very close. That's a good play by my opponent. I think he's gonna go for Parlin Punch here. I wanna say Aqua just still gets that. And I wanna try to wake up with me and Chai. I think Aqua Jet is Aqua Jet is stronger base power, right? Than the crits. I mean we'll see. Nice. Okay. And I wanted to get that one turn burnt with Chimp Mian Chow so we could potentially wake up the next time he's on the field. Alright, so this is my opponent's last bit of offense here. So I want to detect. Switch into Flurry. I want to see who's faster between my Urshifu and his Annihilate first before I go for Helping Hand. Because he's just going for Drain Punch. But now I can redirect it into Clefairy. And he already burnt his Terra, so now we can just click Gleam. Oh my god, he's Fake Out. <laughs> what? And he's faster. That's fine. I mean, now we can just click uh, Gleam. Wow, Fake Out is nasty work on Grim. And I think we just click Gleam here. Like, we don't want to... Um, he's going to have to bring out Among Us. I don't have really good Among Us answers right now. But luckily enough, he can't tear and we hit these two for super effective. It might just be parting shot into the flurry. Okay. I'd rather him do that than have Among Us on the field right now. There's Among Us. All right, next turn he's gonna protect Annihilate. Yeah, he has to. All right, he is Citrus, but a Helping Hand Gleam will KO that. If he spores for me, I'm in a bad spot though. Uh, 
Uh, this is getting tight. The fake out on Grim saved him in this game, though. And it turns out that his Annihilate was faster than my Urshifu. Flurry can't wake up though soon. I actually wish I had protect on Gafari right now. I'm seeking a helping hand, um, close combat, get the KO on the Mogus. Okay, we do KO Among Us. So I wonder does a single target Moonblast KO and how like Yeah, my late Among is is hard to break. I needed Urshifu, but Yeah, I, I could have just close combat at Chi U turn one. I didn't have to take that much damage on Urshifu. He shouldn't protect here, right? Oh, kind of Yeah, that's gonna steal the game, man. Well played. Yeah, the Grimmsnarl set was insane. Fake out plus screens. So, does he not have an attacking move? He had Thunder Wave, Fake Out, and Light Screen. The other, I would assume the other ones reflect, right? What play though? Yeah, I'm not sure how I could have gotten out of that one. I, I, close combat and Chiyu turn one would have won me the game because I probably would just one shot it. I don't. The way he didn't protect it though made me think that it's Sash. But he just went for a Terra Blast. I would have been in a really bad spot if he just clicked Grass Terra Terra Blast turn one. I could have also faked out Chiyu. Let's get into the next one. All right, for our final game, we have Tornadus, uh, Tornadus, Fluttermane, Dragonite, no Chimpow. 
rid of them, Arcanine, and Melodic, Milotic. I really think that Flutter can just clean through with Choice Specs, um, that's what I'm doing. And then we bring in Godango in the back. E speed to clean up. Yeah, I like that. I mean, my Arcanine only really loses to his My Milo Tick. But we have Thunderbolt on Godango, too. Yeah, I think Flutterman can just cleave through his team, just shoot through it. Change mine up. Okay, this is perfect. I'm on the scout for Iron Head. Before I go for a helping hand. Because sometimes Dragonites, when they don't have Chimp Power, they carry Iron Head to compensate for their damage. Um, because it's really good into. He has Protect already, so. I wonder if it's just Hypnosis. Okay, so let's see how much this is doing. That'll let me know how much a helping hand will do. Yeah, it's not too much. Okay, yeah, we gotta get rid of that ASAP. Is it uh, leftovers too? It is. If it has hypnosis, that thing is gonna be an issue. I wanna go for the helping hand play, Terra, Dazzling. We did bring another special attacker to hit it. Recoil is pretty scary. So something's taking a helping hand bling here. Arcanite can't take it. Now this is Terra plus helping hand, so this is gonna do a lot more than the previous game did. I expect this to do about 20, 25% to Arcanine, maybe 50 to Melodic, oh, a little bit more, okay. And he still misses Hypnosis, okay. Woo! All right. So we know Melodic's probably gonna protect this turn. We did get bailed out by missing that, by dodging that Hypnosis even though he had the coil boost. So it was a small chance that we dodge it because it went from like um, a 50% accurate, 55% accurate, I believe, or 60, to about 80% accurate. So we still had like a 20% chance to dodge it. We didn't go for protect. So we remove Melodic, it just gets a coil off and misses Hypnosis, so it doesn't get to do much there. So you really got to get two coils off for it to become 100% accurate. All right. So we missed our opportunity to go for Helping Hand there. So 
This is cooking rock slide. Well, now he does throw the E speed into Flutter. He brought out his own Flutter, though. I don't know what that was a play. You should have brought out Dragonite and went for E speeds. But I got to go Dango, though, so I, I, I got a good matchup to Dragonite in the end game. And we still have our own uh, Arcanine. And Melodic is gone, so I think we're positioned pretty good to win this game. That is Terra Fairy. But he's not booster energy speed, so Godango kind of clears at this point. Are you timid max speed as well? Oh, he's not choice banded, rock star. Okay. Nice. I think a flurry might still survive this. Yeah, we did. Now he's bring out Godango in this game. His only hope is that, you know, my Godango is slow. He knocks out Kaferi with E speed. Right? But again, my Godango is Scarf, so we just outspeed and double knockout both. He didn't even go for E speed. <laughs> Okay, so at that point, he's just, I mean, why would you not go for E-Speed there? And then Shadow Ball, hoping that you outspeed. And this is how Scarf Godango can be incredible. And yeah, Dragonite can't be much here. I'm gonna nightshade and switch into Arcanine and reset my special attack drop. Yeah, he just cancels. Nice. So Dragonite came in, protected, switched out, didn't get to play the game, and also my loaded just clicked coil, missed hypnosis, and didn't get to play the game. Arcanine played a little bit, Flutterman played a little bit. But I like it when I can, you know, not allow my opponent to play the game and make their Pokemon just completely useless. So he's basically playing a 2v4 because the other two didn't get to do anything, really. We are fortunate that he missed Hypnosis, but Hypnosis is already low accuracy. So when you're using that move and that strategy, if you're only going for one core, you, you should expect to still miss Hypnosis. Just like at that point, it's like Hydro Pump accuracy, and we all know how much Hydro Pump misses. But that's going to be it for these battles. This team was very fun. Let's get into a final review with it. And also, let's see how high we got on the ladder. All right, rank 26. Uh, we were 25. Um, we started around like 40-something after not playing for a couple days, but uh, we're still pretty high. So, all right, everyone, final review with this team. This team was absolutely fun. I do recommend giving it a try. Uh, it does give me those vibes back to when uh, Calyrex Shadow was in the game and you played it alongside Mianchao. Um, using Godango um, and Fluttermane next to Mianchao is very similar to that feel. As well as like using like Urshifu next to Kefleri with the ghost types. It kind of gives you like that old uh, Spectrier Kefleri feel too. Um, so it, it is, this team is really fun. Um, the white guard didn't come out uh, too much. But it, just having it as an option is really good. And gets like some end games or early games that you might need it. The faint also didn't come out too much. I feel like maybe you can replace that with like knockoff. So that you can you know hit ghost types and not be walled by them. Uh, you do have a lot of coverage into ghost types but it's a lot of cases to where you can't really go for faint even though like it is good next to flutter a lot of things are choosing to like just not protect uh maybe they're countering for or they're covering for faint or they're just not afraid of the damage that you could put out but like i said i think knockoff might be a better move there um but as you keep playing with the team you'll, you'll know for yourself the toy scarf on Godango was excellent um surprising people and having like a locked up in game when they feel like they may have a chance but you already know that you're going to win the game 
is completely fun and like having three choice items is always you know fun to play with i like when you have to make like very calculated decisions based on your items because you can't switch your moves right and that kind of makes for a fun match because you have to think a couple steps ahead and I, I like to play that type of game the nightshade on Kefleri and fire terror was really good uh, it is the fire terror does help you resist a lot of the things that Kefleri would otherwise be weak to especially like steel type attacks and it's, uh, we did run into like a scissor where I could have tarried in the fair but uh, I didn't do it that turn but I feel like if I had done that, that game would have been a little bit more locked up. But he did lead an Urshifu on a turn with the Scizor. So that's kind of what stopped me from wanting to just immediately click that Terra, Fair, Terra Fire. Um, the Nightshade is also good for dealing damage. It makes it so Clefairy is not just sitting on the field. Uh, if it gets taunted or something and not doing any damage, it can pick up you know, KOs and do chip damage. So things are in range of other type of attacks. So that's really good with the Nightshade. The After You is a good coverage for the Trick Room. That's being min speed. It allows you to be able to move first. Now, it does not work on Godango. One thing about the Kefleri Godango lead, while Kefleri can protect Godango, just know that you can't go for those after you and help your hands onto that. And I think that I did in a practice game, went for uh, after you on the trick room, and it just failed, right? So just keep that in mind. But everything else can use the after you tech. Choice Brand Arcanine continues to be great. Uh, this is a Fairy Terra set, and it just does a lot of damage. Um, and the end, it's always good in, in games when you remove like the water types and the ground types and it just can sweep games from that point Source Dance uh, Urshifu is also pretty good. Now this doesn't do as much damage as I want I think maybe Water Terror might still be good uh, a little bit better But the Steel Terror did give me a lot of like safety nets against certain mons that want to Be able to two hit KO like a Water Terror Urshifu that are already calc to be able to two hit KO that and I'll speed you right so the Steel Terror was meant to like make us really both and be able to take some hits. And that's the idea behind that. And last but not least, uh, this Fluttermain Timid Choice Specs is still my favorite Choice Specs set Fluttermain. While it doesn't have the bulk that the other bulky Fluttermains does, it is very surprisingly fast and hit hard. And a lot of people aren't expecting Fluttermain to be fast and hit hard at the same time, right? They expect it to either be to hit hard and be bulky. Or to be fast and bulky but not deal that much damage right and this one is just fast and does a lot of damage and i kind of like that combination of that and it's funny because this is how flutterman used to be ran when it first was introduced but now people have moved more towards being able to survive hits and they're not doing as much damage or they're not as fast right so that can really catch a lot of opponents off guard but that's going to be it for uh, a final review with this team i'll give this team a 9 out of 10 it is very fun very unique and it is a good way to you know showcase how good me and child's close combats are or Kefleri's redirection is. But that's going to be it. If you like this type of content, go ahead and leave a like for me. Subscribe because I'm posting Pokemon content every single day. And we'll continue to grow the channel. And we're shooting for 500 followers. So I would uh, appreciate it kindly if you all go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And I'll catch you in the next one. Alright, deuces.